everyone, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos about knitting and yarn and that's pretty much it. So if that is interesting to you, feel free to subscribe, check out my other videos, follow me on Instagram at Jamie underscore create. I'm also on TikTok. I always like almost forget to say that. And yeah, I just post about my knitting and my yarn and my knitting patterns and that's it's literally all I do. This is my first knitting podcast in a hot minute. I never really intended to take such a long break between podcasts. I normally try to do them roughly once a month, but with, I guess, like the holiday season, um, I went away and just like the way things worked out, I decided to hold off on doing a podcast for a little bit longer than I normally would. The initial reason was because in my end of year kind of recap video where I showed everything that I well, pretty much everything that I knit in 2022 quite a few of the projects um, that I, I guess would have shown in the podcast had I been filming it when I normally would ended up in that video some of those projects might reappear in this one and I'll talk about them in a bit more depth for the most part I just felt like it would be pretty repetitive for me to then go and do a podcast and I also wanted to do my like 2023 goals video and I had a couple of other videos filmed that I wanted to post um, because I've just been away. So if you didn't see my last video, I talked about the yarn stores that I'd just been to in WA. And I also filmed one of me using my fabric shaver, which I feel like will be a lot, like will be really, really interesting to a lot of people. So check that one out if you haven't seen it already. And yeah, I just felt like I kept getting more ideas and just held off doing the podcast. But here we are. And we have quite a bit to talk about from yeah, the last two months or so, because it's like the end of January now when I'm filming this, it's currently the 25th. And I think the last time I filmed in any podcast was like really early in December. So yeah, a lot's happened since then. And a lot of knitting has happened. Probably not as much knitting as would normally happen in this amount of time. But yeah, I have still obviously been knitting and I do have things to show you. I'm just going to go through my whips and I'm going to go through my finished objects. I'm not going to talk about yarn purchases. I just don't think that's going to be a thing that I can really keep up. I try to do it at the start, but it's just like, even if I'm doing these once a month, like firstly, I'm on a bit of a yarn band at the moment, but when I do buy yarn, I tend to just use it like either as soon as I get it or as soon as I kind of get an idea, really. I, I'm not the kind of person to buy yarn and then like hoard it for a long time unless I buy it with absolutely no purpose. But like if I buy it and like I know what I want to make with it, then like, it's gonna be really hard for me to like, if, like to just not knit with it until after I film this podcast, like just so I can hold up the yarn and show you. Like for me, that's just not worth it. I know other people do that, but yeah, that's just not the way I roll. And I, yeah, I'm on a yarn band from now until foreseeable future anyway. So yeah, I did buy a bit of yarn in this time, obviously in the last two months, but some of that might come up in the podcast based on the projects that I'm uh, working on. But yeah, you'll see the yarn that I've bought when I use it. <laughs> That's pretty much how I'm gonna go from now on. I'm like, not sure which one to start with. I think, I think I'm gonna start with FOs. I feel like that makes more sense to kind of talk about what we've done and then talk about what we're working on. All of my FOs are kind of behind me and to my right, no, not to my right, to my left. Um, to your right, <laughs> I guess. Um, I, yeah, I just, it's been a lot. I had a market in the time since I filmed my last video. So there was stuff that I made for the market. One of those things actually sold. I might talk about it briefly and put a photo up uh, of the finished project. But yeah, it's just like, it's just been really all over the place. But yeah, I've got, because of that market, I do have quite a few finished objects, even though I feel like I didn't do that much. Like I didn't finish that many things. And a lot of my whips, you'll see, probably don't have that much progress on them. But yeah, I think I'm going to start with my finished objects and hopefully this won't be too chaotic. So I'm going to start with an easy one. Uh, super simple. This is my uh, hat that I made, a bucket hat. It's the Drop in the Bucket Hat by Kara's Knitting. And it is a really, really cute pattern that I just felt like making because I wanted to use up a spare skein that I had of... Um, this beautiful chunky merino from Cardigang. It's in the shade Bubblegum, I'm pretty sure. And it's just a great pattern to use up, you know, if you have a spare skein lying around. I wanted to make one because I am in summer, if it wasn't obvious by my Australian accent. And 
I was about to go away and I thought if I make a hat, I'm probably more likely to wear a hat because I tend not to wear hats. Um, so I made this, I did wear it. I also brought my other hat that I do own <laughs> with me and I did actually wear it quite a bit, which was really exciting for me because I really, like, I don't even think I brought, this is going to be like terrible advice. Like don't do what I do. Like I didn't bring a hat with me to Europe and I traveled in Europe in summer for like two and a half months and I didn't bring a hat with me never wore a hat but Australian sun is just something else like we have a hole in the ozone layer and like it really does make a big difference so especially like going to the beach I just really couldn't go without a hat so yeah good to have this one and my other one it's a super super cute pattern like I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about hats and me like the main reason I don't wear them is just because I don't think they look good on me but I'm trying to get over that because I'm very aware that it's important to wear hats. So yeah, this is that one. And this one literally took me like a couple of hours. I feel like it took me a bit longer than it probably should have because I kind of kept having to fix the sewing bit on the top to sew this like top section onto the bottom piece, but everything else was really quick. And it was kind of just like, I kept stuffing it up and wanting, and I was a bit of a perfectionist and yeah, kept fixing it. But if it wasn't for that, I probably would have. Oh, I also think I, I think I started off making a size too small and then I ended up unraveling it and starting again so yeah it all the whole thing took me a bit longer than it should have taken but it still took me really really quick like I still I'm pretty sure I still finished it in a day so yeah the next one I fully cannot believe I made after I filmed my last podcast because it feels like I made it so long ago but it is the heard it through the grapevine vest which is my pattern and this is the second one that I made I made it actually for the market so this one's got like label on it and a tag um i didn't sell it but it it is you know market ready um i used the actually it's a new yarn from wool and the gang it's called the lil crazy sexy wool so you might think it looks a lot like the crazy sexy wool especially like this one that's behind me it's the lilac powder cut color um but this is the lil crazy sexy wool so it's basically like half the thickness so this one is um 100 grams for 80 no yeah, 100 grams for 80 meters. Yeah, this is 100 grams for 80 meters and the other one is 200 grams for 80 meters. It's basically like literally half the thickness, so it's like bulky weight yarn. And I realized that this is the exact same weight as the yarn that I actually used for the original sample, which was the Amano Yarns Yana, which is always so hard to say, Amano Yarns Yana, like that's such a tongue twister. And that, that those come in 200 gram skeins. Yeah, so it's 200 grams. 160 meters yeah okay so I was right <laughs> and this is 100 grams 80 meters but it price wise it kind of works out to be pretty similar because obviously like the 200 grams gains are just like more expensive but you get double the amount of yarn so yeah but I really wanted to try this yarn so I ended up ordering it on Black Friday because it came out like just before and I was like nah like I'm waiting to Black Friday like I don't know if they're gonna put it on sale because it's new but I was like worth it's worth the shot and like they yeah, had a store-wide um sale so I ended up getting it discounted which was always good and I knew exactly what I wanted to make with it so I got the right amount obviously which is the benefit of like writing your own patterns and having them tested and published and then just like deciding to make them it's like you know that you're getting the right amount of yarn and yeah this came out literally like the exact same measurements and size and everything as the other one I will say this yarn is probably a little bit less soft than the Amano yarns one which is surprising because it's a very soft this is a very soft yarn but the Amano yarns Yana is incredibly soft and in terms of just like if you're sensitive um I would probably like prefer to wear the green one which is why I decided not to keep this one I also don't need two but I also do wear the wool in the gang crazy sexy wool yarn and like I'm fine but like for like a more fitted piece like this where I would wear it on its own especially because like jumpers I would wear maybe over something and they're a bit more oversized so it's less it's touching my skin less um something like this uh, I'm a bit more conscious about my skin sensitivities and I'm noticing my skin sensitivities a lot more lately than I used to so I don't know why that is and if, I don't know if something's changed or what it is but yeah it's still super soft it just really depends on the person as to how sensitive you are but it's a gorgeous gorgeous yarn to work with and it comes in a bunch of beautiful colors and I'm really excited that they came out with this yarn so this next one I finished a few days ago and it is oh well, it's just been like folded and it's like been blocked recently so i'm just gonna like try and get rid of the fold marks okay um this is my 
first official finished sample of the Josephine vest. I did start one in a different yarn and then wasn't really happy with how the yarn and the pattern were going together. I wasn't really vibing it. So I decided to start another one. And it took me a while to finish because I was just honestly a little bit lazy and I had not that long to go. I was like basically finished the front and back and only needed to do the neck and sleeve trims. And I just like procrastinated on it for like weeks. So I ended up finishing it like the other day. And this is using the Woolenworks Fingering Suri in the shade Tickled Pink. Um, really, really beautiful color. This didn't even use one full skein. Like I, let me try to see like, like I still have all of this yarn left um, cause they come in hundred gram skeins, which is a lot. Like for example, like Melted Baby Cereal comes in 50 gram skeins. So this is like, you're getting double um, in one skein, which is amazing. I don't know what was going through my head when I started this because I started it like ages ago. I, I may have even shown this in the last podcast, like in its infancy. But I don't know what I was going th was going through my head. I actually did end up knitting this English style, so maybe that's what happened. But I swear I would have done a gauge swatch before. But I don't know what happened, and somehow this ended up being tiny. And then I blocked it, and it's still pretty small for me. I think after blocking, I can comfortably say this is an extra small. Before blocking, I'm like this is for a child. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna have to make another one. Um, I can definitely still write the pattern off of this sample. Um, which I do intend to do. It's like the main like next on my to-do list because I really like it and it's a good like it goes with the Josephine jumper. So I am really keen to to write this pattern and I definitely can write it off the um, extra small. But I would like to make another one in my size so that I can wear it and model it for photos to go with the pattern. So that's yeah. I just need to get some more yarn. So I'm hopefully gonna get some more from Chloe soon because I really do like this yarn for this pattern. It's very similar to the Melted Baby Suri, especially in like weight and meterage and stuff. And also just like in feel, it's really, really beautiful and soft. Um, but I do need to get more yarn. I might be dying some with her, maybe. <laughs> we'll see how much time we have. Otherwise I might just, yeah, might just get whatever color she has. Yes, I really, really love this pattern. I think the lace detailing is beautiful. I actually really love it after blocking. I actually don't remember if I ever blocked my Josephine jumper. I think I would have, but like there's a part of me that like doesn't remember doing it. So I'm just a bit like unsure. I really like how the blocking has like opened up the lace stitches like really beautifully. Um, you can check out my Instagram um, actually and TikTok. I did a reel slash TikTok um, showing the process of blocking this and a lot of people have found it really helpful, which I think is really like nice and also surprising because I'm no blocking expert. I've just, you know, figured it out over time and I still don't necessarily know everything about blocking at all. So a lot of people like asking questions that I don't even know how to answer. But yeah, you can see at the start uh, what it looked like. And then at the end, you can see how like the stitches opened up quite a lot. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy with how this has turned out. I'm just a bit sad that it's too small for me, but I guess once the pattern has been written, I'll probably just sell it uh, at a market or something um, to someone who it will fit. <laughs> so that's this one. This next one I'm really excited about. Um, I haven't actually shown like anyone this. I never actually even posted on Instagram that I'd finished them, which is so weird because I feel like I was giving so many updates in the lead up to finishing them. And then once I finished them, I, I think, I don't know, I was a bit nervous about posting them because they didn't come out 100% perfect. Like, I don't know, they didn't fit me 100% like how I'd ideally like them to. They definitely do fit me, but I think I'm just, yeah, a bit insecure. So I think I've got to just like get the confidence to like properly like try them on. I think I should probably block them as well. But these are, my first pair of shorts that I've ever knitted. So it's a very, very exciting feat <laughs> because this has been a long time in the making. So the pattern I used to make these is the So Summer, so Summer Shorts pattern by Jessie May. And that pattern is very, very good. I've actually had it in my library since, I don't know, the middle of last year. I intended to make them for European summer. I was knitting them for the first couple of weeks of my trip, maybe like the first week or two. And then I kind of realized that I was using, like I was using Wool in the Gang uh, Shiny Happy Cotton, which was mm, like, I'll admit, 
very much not the correct weight yarn. Like this literally calls for a fingering weight yarn and that is like a worsted. So I thought, oh yeah, like it's fine. Like I'll just make the smallest size and it'll be fine. It wasn't fine. I did firstly run out of yarn and they were just like absolutely massive. So I ended up unraveling them and I was gonna try again with a different yarn and then I just kind of didn't. <laughs> I kind of forgot about it to be honest. And then I kind of put that idea on pause for a while because I came back and it wasn't summer anymore. But I was like, this summer I really do want to try the knit, knit the shorts. And I did bring with me to Perth, I brought four skeins of the Fibra or Fibra Natura Natural Fine Hand Knitting Yarns. And it's the cotton wood, 100% organic cotton yarn, which was actually, um, I guess, gifted to me by my one of my friends, one of my knitting friends who uh, gave me like a bunch of her cotton that she like, didn't want anymore. And it was all like pink. And I was like, well, I like pink. And if you're going to just get rid of it, like I'll definitely take it. Um, and she gave me four skeins of that. I actually didn't even check dye lots. They definitely weren't the same dye lots, which yeah, not much you can do there, but um, I should have probably like checked that before. But yes, yeah, so I thought, I thought maybe this could pass as a fingering weight, but no, it's definitely a DK. So that was my own fault once again. Closer to fingering weight, but not quite. And I thought, yeah, I'll just make the smaller size again. It'll be fine. And this is how it turned out. I actually ended up having to get another skein of yarn, which I talked about in my last video. Um, I managed to find it while I was away, but that even then that still wasn't quite enough like to finish the whole pattern, but it was enough to get me shorts the length that I wanted. So it's fine. So this is how they ended up. They're super high waisted. Obviously like you can see kind of where the, the, sh the legs kind of split. There's not a lot of length between like where they split and after and, and the end. So that was because I was running out of yarn. Like and also they were just getting quite long. I think if I was to make these again, I would just use the correct yarn and then hopefully it would work better because the, where they split for the, like the crotch area is quite low down. So they just fit a bit weirdly, but they do fit and I am hopefully going to wear them. <laughs> Maybe like at home. I feel like I wanted these to be like wear, go out and wear them shorts, but I think they might just be like shorts to wear around the house, like kind of loungy shorts, which is totally fine. Um, I would love to design a pair of shorts at some point this year, but I am really scared of it. So we will see if that actually ends up happening. But yeah, I'm really proud of them. Um, it was pretty much all I worked on for most of my time in RWA. So I'll always think of that trip when I look at these or wear these shorts. Right, so moving on to a bunch of sleeves that I made. I did also show these in my end of year recap, but I will show them again in case you missed that video. So I made like a bunch of mohair shruggies while I was preparing for my market. I actually didn't end up selling any of them at the last market, which was a bit of a shame, but I will have them for the next one. Either that or I will put them on my website. I'm still debating the two. I am really tempted to just put them on my website, but yeah, we'll just have to see. But I did make six pairs. They do work up super quick. So I was able to crank out six pairs in a week and they use a variety of different yarns. So I'll go through each one and just talk about the different yarns. But in general, the sleeves, I like kind of made up the pattern um, and was really happy with the first pair. And so just kind of replicated that a bunch of times and it's pretty customizable, but I don't think I'm gonna write a pattern for it. So my plan at the moment is to actually film a YouTube tutorial which I will do literally as soon as the yarn arrives. Like I ordered some Hip Knit Shop fluff yarn from Hip Knit Shop, which is very similar to the yarns that I've used um, for these sleeves um, in terms of fiber content and weight and stuff. But I haven't used this yarn before and they have a really, really nice color range and I've been so tempted. So one morning I just like woke up and ordered a bunch, ordered like I think five different like colors. So yeah i'm gonna just pick one to make for myself which i'm gonna do a tutorial i'm thinking probably gonna use the baby blue one because it's so pretty and i think i'll definitely wear those so that's the plan but then i'm probably gonna just use the, the rest of the yarn to make more so yeah they're just super fun to make um but that's the plan so keep an eye out for that tutorial i'm hoping i'll be able to yeah show you in my, the best of my abilities how to kind of customize it to fit your desired size or whatever so like you can measure you know measure your arms and just make it as wide as you want but I don't know when it's going to be because my yarn shipment isn't tracked <laughs> so I have no idea when the yarn is coming but I'm hoping it'll come soon it is coming all the way from Norway so who knows when it's going to arrive but as soon as it does that is going to be up there on my list of videos to film so just going through each pair of sleeves in terms of yarn so 
four out of six of them are using the Cardi Gang mohair. Um, I really like this yarn and it is super convenient for me because it comes like super quickly. Like I ordered it and it arrived, well, I ordered it on a Sunday and it arrived on the Tuesday because they shipped it on the Monday. So like it was very, very quick and the shipping is free. So yeah, it was just super, super convenient for me when I was on like a time crunch, especially. So I did this one in red, which I really, really like. Oh, there's just something on it. I really, really like this red color and I really am not one to normally knit with red. So this was a bit of a, oh, okay. I guess I'm gonna order a red yarn. Like that was really kind of weird for me. It's not normally a color I'd normally gravitate towards, but um, I think it looks really cool uh, in this style. And I think it's just really vibrant. So I'm hoping maybe, maybe this year I'll knit with red a little bit more, but yeah, so that's these ones. I also used their beautiful, I think it's called Popcorn Yellow, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Um, yeah, these gorgeous pastel yellow color, also from Cardi Gang. So yeah, super, super stunning. I also used their beautiful lilac color for another one. So yeah. And then I also used their beautiful beautiful like grass green I don't know if the name is actually grass green I just made that up but it's yeah it's a stunning like almost kind of neon but like just vibrant vibrant green that I just I just love and this one I actually made in a day pretty much I filmed a video how much can I knit in a day when I was knitting this um project so yeah those are the Cardi Gang ones and then I have two more so this one I actually did using two strands of the Niteto mohair yarn. They have two mohairs, but this is like the mohair cloud yarn. And uh, yeah, I ended up using it double stranded. I probably could have just done one strand and it would have been fine, but I felt like double stranded was probably safer in terms of matching gauge. Um, but this yarn is a little bit different and obviously kind of has a bit of a different feel because it's got, I guess it's, yeah, because I held it double stranded you can kind of see the stitches more and it's a little bit less holy. So yeah, but it's still really, really pretty. I really love this pink color. I had quite a bit of that yarn left over from previous projects. So this was a great stash buster. And then this was actually the first one I made. I had two skeins of the Woolen the Gang Take Home O'Hare in the shade Lime Sherbet or Lime Sorbet. Not, I can't remember which one it is. This has got to be my favorite a chunky mohair yarn out of all of them. Um, I, I'm yet to try the Hip Knit Shop one, but this one is just so soft. And as I mentioned before, I do have skin sensitivities, um, especially with mohair. I do notice them a lot and I'm quite picky about the mohair that I wear. This one, I'm so tempted to keep myself. I am gonna keep them for sale at the moment, but at some point if they are, haven't sold, I probably, will get, I probably will keep them. But yeah, I just love this color and it's super soft and I could definitely see myself wearing um, this yarn and being perfectly fine and not being, uh, you know, being too itchy. So yeah, that's like a huge, huge plus with this one. Um, not that the other ones aren't soft, but this one is just like, for someone who's sensitive, like extra soft. And yeah, this color is just to die for and it just made me obsessed and made me want to knit more of these sleeves and all these different colors. But um, yeah, I think this one has to be my favorite out of all of them. Okay, wow, we finished the FOs. And for some reason, I know there was quite a few, but it doesn't feel like it. And I, I'm i really hoping to like finish some more projects soon. A lot of these whips you've probably seen before, which is not great. And also there's some whips that I'm not even gonna show you in this video because I've made absolutely no progress on them since the last video. But we'll talk about those when they have had progress. I'm just gonna go in order of this pile, which is super arbitrary but this is a piece that I can't remember if I had I don't know if I had started this in the last podcast I'm actually not sure but I don't have a name for this like design but I did already do one and I definitely showed it in the last podcast because I made it for it ended up being for the market because it was too big for me so I thought let me make another one that hopefully will fit me it's gonna be like a crop top with like yeah, like little triangles kind of here. Um, and it's using the Alpacino Merino and it's, I mean, I haven't blocked it so you can't really tell, but it has have like this little eyelet detailing at the bottom. And yeah, I'm really hoping this one will fit me better. The stitches are obviously can see very tight. I am knitting English style for this one, which I did for the last one. I think 
I thought because like the yardage was exactly the same for the two yarns that I used. This one is the Alpacino Merino, but the previous one I used um, the Woolen Works Chunky Alpaca. They were the same yardage, but I think the Chunky Alpaca was 100% alpaca. So it definitely is different to this because Alpacino Merino is 60% Merino and 40% Baby Alpaca. So although they do feel quite similar and like look very similar, this one is definitely more dense than the 100% alpaca. And so I'm using five and a half millimeter needles on this yarn, which is quite small. So I think a good block will definitely be like necessary for this one. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that it is gonna fit me, but yeah, it's definitely quite different to the other one, but in a good way, because I think the other one ended up too big for a reason. Um, but I still am obsessed with the arm. Like I really want to use more if Chloe starts to dye more on that base. I'm very keen to to try more projects with it. So this is where we're at. I haven't really been working on it that much lately. Um, I think I will pick it up again because uh, it isn't, I don't have that much left to go. I've probably got a little bit more length and then just to do the the shaping which is not much and then the straps so this will be done soon i just need to actually do it um but yeah this is kind of more like a personal project at the moment i don't really plan on writing a pattern for it or anything so that's kind of why it's been not so high on my priorities but it's been fun it's been a fun like portable project to kind of take around with me this one i feel like i had only like just started i probably had done quite a bit but i definitely think that i started it only a couple days before i filmed my last podcast um, and this one has definitely been not one that I've been prioritizing, um, unfortunately, because I really do like it. Um, it's just not like it's just not a priority at the moment because it's also very much a personal project. And because I'm using five different colors and I'm alternating every second row, it's just not the most convenient project to like take around with me and I've been like away and stuff. So, yeah, I'm hoping to make some more progress on this, but I'm not in a big rush because it is a cardigan and I'm not really going to get much wear out of it until the weather cools down a bit so I'm happy to take my time and it is a really nice relaxing project but I just yeah I'm not like trying to whip through it su super quickly but it's yeah I mean I'm free handing it it's like a cardigan <laughs> I don't know it's just gonna be like a really cute cardigan that like is just not like too hectic it's kind of just like a bit like on, obviously it's on DK yarn and I just want it to be just like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but like, I just feel like it's like kind of missing in my wardrobe. And yeah, I probably talked about it in my last podcast as well. I don't really remember what I said, but yeah, I'm using five different colorways from once again, from Woolen Works. Um, let me try to remember. So I'm using Me as a Bird and then we've got Rosella. I think this one's called Starlight and Rufus. So those are the four from Woolen Works. And then I've got a fifth skein from Ching Fiber, which is also behind me in the middle there, but this is the Ching Fiber DK and it's in the shade Sherbet, something like that. Maybe it's just Sherbet. Oh my God, I can't remember. But yeah, it's from their like Kawaii Alien collection from a while ago um, that I've been meaning to use and I still have another skein, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to that skein or not. Um, if I don't end up using any of that, I think I've got an idea for another project for it. So I'm holding off because I still have quite a bit left. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm literally just like alternating every second row and it's like stripey, but it kind of looks like I've made my own kind of colorway with it. So yeah, I think it's super pretty and like this color is definitely really summery, but the piece itself, like I just don't think I'm going to wear it that much until the weather cools down. So yeah, but hopefully this podcast is kind of like help me like remember all my projects. And so hopefully I'll be able to like continue actually working on these ones that I started ages ago. Okay. And then these last two are more recent cast ons. This one is gonna be really hard to show you, so just like a warning in advance. So I'm gonna show you first like the, what's currently the front piece, but what might end up actually being the back piece. I think I'm gonna fix it up, the shaping to make this the back piece because I think the front piece is turning out a bit neater. <laughs> and so I'd like, I'd rather the neater side be the front. But this is a very exciting project and it's been quite the chaotic thing to work on. I've been working on it for the past like week, I guess, since I, got back from um, WA and the yarn is all Alpacino Merino, which I purchased in WA. And I would have talked about it more in my last video because um, I talked about when I bought yarn, whatever. So it's using five different colors. This is what we currently have. This is the vibe. 
it's intarsia galore and color scheme is just like it's I have not been so excited about like five colors put together like in so long like I just fell in love with these with this color combination and I just couldn't I just I didn't even know what I was gonna make at the time but I was just so excited and at the moment I'm really really excited with how this is coming together I'm the initial idea was like I'm gonna write a pattern and like I really hope to still do that but this is a piece of work this this project like I have had to go back so many times and redo bits because I like just slightly misread the charts and I'm fully following my own charts like normally I don't even chart things before I knit them but this time it was I felt like it was necessary and even then I'm like still keep messing up and like when you make one mistake it just like stuffed everything up after that so I've been really trying to not make mistakes and yeah I'm just like I don't know size grading this is gonna be a nightmare and also I feel like it might be a nightmare for people to knit but if people are willing to go through you know the process of intaglia which is not always the most fun but you know has great results I think I'm just gonna put out some feelers once the whole thing's actually done because I have absolutely no idea what this is gonna end up being like I know it's gonna be a jumper but like I have no idea what the sleeves are gonna be I have no idea if I have enough yarn <laughs> That's a whole other thing because normally I would like the amount of yarn that I have like five skeins like should be enough for a jumper but because of like all these ends <laughs> I just feel like and I'm trying on this front piece to like not cut the ends as much like and to try and you'll see what, what I'm doing but yeah I'm trying to be a bit more resourceful but I'm just nervous that I'm gonna run out and I'm gonna have to end up buying more yarn which is just gonna be a whole thing and might delay everything as well but yeah this is what we're looking at. It's intarsia, it's random, it's got no deeper meaning. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's really like, I haven't designed something like this in a very long time. I used to do so many like colorful, crazy, just like out there things and I've really kind of stepped back from that lately and I miss it a lot. So this has kind of been really fun for me to just go a bit crazy, um, but I will show you what I mean because like if that looked hectic to you just wait till you see the bit that's actually on the needles so <laughs> this is this is what I'm currently dealing with um I was pretty good at the start at like keeping my knots like not not too bad because I know that like if you just if you don't as long as you're not like when you're turning your work turning in the same direction like if you just alternate each row then like the, t the knots shouldn't be so bad but it's still kind of managed to get super tangled because I think I keep kind of like stopping working on it and then like I pick it up and then I just like throw it on my chair and then it's like it gets tangled but yeah you can see on this back side the wrong side of this side I mean obviously a lot of a lot of the strands are actually just coming from the skeins um because they're still attached but like even here you can see like there's not nearly as many loose ends which means yeah I'm definitely being hopefully a little bit more resourceful with the yarn and just like having more floats and stuff um so it's kind of like a mix of intarsia and also like fair isle i don't really know i don't know where the distinction really gets made between those two but yeah this is the what i think will end up being the front panel because i think i did a bit of a better job at keeping things a bit neater on this side but I don't know I'll have to like properly compare the two once I get to the shaping I'm pretty happy with it and I'm like excited about the front and back panels I just don't know what I'm gonna do for the sleeves if I'm gonna continue to do the intarsia on the sleeves or if I want to do something else like I really don't know um, we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get to it um, but yeah I'm super excited about this one the colors if you weren't wanted to know um, we've got bubblegum pink chalk yellow Cameo Rose, Pink Sherbet, and Lilac Punch is the purple, which is actually a new color and I'm obsessed with it. So um, that's what we're currently using. And yeah, it's been like the main project I've been working on um, since coming back, as, along with this next one I'm gonna show you. But yeah, I've kind of just been alternating between this one and the next one. So we have made a lot of progress and obviously it's on eight millimeter needles. So it does work out fairly quickly, just not as quickly as it would if it was not in Tasia. Oh my God, like literally just even the thought of like picking up all of this yarn at the same time is like pretty much impossible. Okay, oh my God, look at this. Um, I actually ended up splitting all the skeins into two 
because I found that easier because if you've ever knit in Tarsia then you'd know that like you kind of need more than one skein if you, you're using the same colour like more than once in the same row. Anyway, that's I found been definitely easier than it was before I did that. <laughs> okay, we're up to the last piece, last whip finally. This has been, I would say a long time coming. I mean, it hasn't really been something I've been thinking about for that long, but it's definitely like people I'm sure would be quite shocked that this is my first time knitting a petite knit pattern. So I'm popping my petite knit cherry and it's been going quite well. It's actually been going a lot quicker than I anticipated, but that's mostly because I've been working on basically just this and that last project, um, as, I, as I said. So this is the progress I've made on my Jenny sweater. And when I say my Jenny sweater, I mean my mum's future Jenny sweater because this is not for me. I am gonna give this to my mum. I really, really, really love it. It's definitely gonna be more my mum's vibe. It's gonna be way longer than jumpers I normally make for myself, which is the main reason that I'm making it for her because I know the petite knit jumpers tend to be a bit longer and that's more my mum's vibe. Whereas for me, I am more of a cropped person. I am making this for her for like Mother's Day, for her birthday, just as a, I appreciate everything you do for me kind of present um and also because i really wanted to try a petite knit pattern but i didn't really see myself wearing any of her stuff so it's basically just an excuse to make her patterns and try a new texture as well like this new smocking technique which i've never done before and i think it looks so cool and just like really sick i actually would love to just like do this in chunky yarn and see what it would look like i am knitting a whole jumper on four millimeter needles which don't remember the last time I did that. So this is definitely, even the fact that I've done this much and probably, I think I probably started about two weeks ago. I'm pretty impressed with myself. I still have a way to go before I get to the part where you start doing the decreases because it is like a raglan shaping, but it's bottom up, which I've also maybe, I don't know if I've never done it, but I've not done it in a while if I've never done it before. Can't really remember. But like if this was for me, like, and I don't know where the sleeve shaping starts, but like roughly here, like, I would have like, this is where I would be sitting. So like, I would have, you know, split for the sleeves ages ago. So it's like, it's a really different experience for me, but um, it's worth it because it's gonna be a piece that she, I know is gonna really love. She's already just loves it so much. Like she, it's not a surprise. Like she picked the pattern and told me what color she wanted. So I've been showing her, I live with her as well. So it's a bit hard to keep a secret, but I did show her after I've been showing her the progress and like, yeah, she's gonna love it. and. That makes me really excited. I'm probably gonna have to slow down on it a bit because I don't have to do it now. Like the, the goal is like by Mother's Day, which is in May. So like I have plenty of time and I am definitely gonna have other things that are gonna probably take precedence. But I have been enjoying just like working on it in the holidays and stuff so that I could kind of get somewhere with it and get real like motivation with it. Um, and yeah, I mean, when, it, when it's finished, it's finished and then she'll get it. But that might be before Mother's Day, who knows? Um, but yeah, so far my experience of uh, following a petite knit pattern has been pretty good. I haven't, you know, had to refer back to the pattern that much because m most of what I'm doing right now is like all just been, you know, the ribbing was all just the same thing over and over again. And then this is like been the same thing over and over again. So there hasn't been like a huge amount of shaping or anything um, for a while. So I haven't really referred back to the pattern in a while. but. Um, so far, yeah, like it's been good. My only thing is that like the video to the how to do this smock stitch wasn't linked in the pattern. It's on her website, but it was in Dutch. And so I had to put translation, like the captions on, which was fine. But then one of the other videos of like how to measure the gauge swatch didn't have like English captions. So that was a bit annoying. That's like my only real issue with it. Cause like if you offer an English pattern, it's just kind of annoying when the video <laughs> isn't in English or doesn't, yeah, I don't know. That's like my only real thing or like that just like there wasn't even a link to the pattern. It was kind of like annoying because I took like not the pattern, there wasn't a link to the video. I had to kind of like stick it out myself and it was a bit unclear of exactly how to knit the gauge swatch. So I had to kind of figure that out. But other than that, so far I've really enjoyed the pattern. So the yarn I'm actually using for this, I bought as well while I was away and it is the Phil Sticks Pepin 8 yarn, which is an eight ply superwash merino. I'm using the shade, uh, I think it's called Peony, uh, 805 is the number. Almost finished this skein and I have a couple more skeins left. I think I've got five skeins left. So I'm about halfway through 
the yarn that I have because I only bought 10 skeins and I don't know do you guys think I look like I'm about halfway through this jumper I'm really struggling to tell I don't know if I'm gonna have to buy more yarn I may I'm just like really I don't know I'm gonna hold off on doing it because I can get this yarn from my local yarn store and I I'm not gonna buy anymore until I know I actually need it so we're exercising restraint, but yeah, I'm not sold that 10 skeins is actually going to be enough. I'm not holding it with a mohair. I think this yeah, this pattern calls for like a like a fingering weight and a mohair, but I'm using just like a DK weight merino, and it's actually been good. I'm I've been I was a bit nervous to do that, um, but I think because I'm using like a thicker yarn rather than just doing the fingering weight without the mohair, like I'm using a DK. Without the mohair, it's definitely working out really well and looks great and it's just not fluffy, but like, it's fine. And like, my mum was a bit sensitive as well, so this is probably the right way to go. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I probably rambled for a while. Um, I also forgot to mention at the start, this is actually the Happy Hour Top, um, my own pattern. Uh, probably should have said at the start the one I'm wearing yeah I think that's all so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one bye <music>